you remember you told him, if you'll save me, I'll praise you. If you'll forgive me, I'll praise you. If you'll put my home back together, I'll praise you. If you'll heal this cancer, I'll praise you. If you'll give me a job, I'll praise you. But here you are, you've got everything you've asked for and we hardly ever look up. But somebody, somebody, there is benefits of, of being thankful. There is benefits. God bless you, dear friends. This is Brother Anthony Wynn. What an honor to share with you this glorious gospel that our Jesus is still alive, still saves, still heals, and still delivers. Please pray for the nation of Israel. Please pray for the hostages. Please pray that God will stand up for His children like He always has, that there'll be fewer casualties, that, that God somehow will let all these hostages go, go home to their families. Help us pray. We're believing God, and if we will bless Israel, God will bless you. They're our, our, our family, our roots, they're part of who we are. So pray for Israel. I want to share with you today on the benefits of being thankful. If you would, if you would live a life of thankfulness. Billy Graham said, be grateful and you won't grumble. Grumble and you won't be grateful. What a powerful saying. Gratitude involves showing appreciation for the things in life that are meaningful or valuable to you. What is valuable to you? It's so easy to get caught up in a negative bias where we linger on bad news and unpleasant experiences, yet allow moments of positive to fade into the background. We guard and protect and keep our hurts and our wounds and our scars and we 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 bathe them and we keep them and we forget our good memories but if you'll get a hold of this word today it can change your life in a great way benefits of being thankful god will keep those in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him and being thankful to god it pulls your heart toward god when, you, when you're thankful for God, it will make you appreciate God and you'll, you'll want to pray, you'll want to worship, you'll want to read your Bible. In the book of Philippians, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, yes, pray, yes, seek till you find Him, knock till He opens, yes, believe. If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believes. You don't believe in your head, you believe in your heart. You, you, got, you, got, you got to believe that God is and God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. So Philippians, Paul said in Philippians 4 and 6, Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving. While you're praying for that job, thank the Lord that you had food today. While you're praying for that spouse, while you're praying for that sickness, thank God they're still alive. While you're praying for that person locked up, thank God. That, that, that they have an opportunity to be released. While you're praying for that, find something to be thankful for. Th be thankful because you're saved, you're forgiven, you're redeemed, you're sanctified, you're filled with the Holy Ghost. Your name's written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. With supplications, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Isaiah said it that way. Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. You don't, you don't want to think about somebody you don't trust, you don't have confidence in. But when you begin to worship the Lord and be thankful for the Lord, and your gratitude is toward the Almighty, the King of kings, Kings and the Lord of Lords. Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusts in thee. Colossians 3.15 And let the peace of God rule in your heart to the which also ye are called in one body and be ye thankful. Not only does saying thank you constitute good manners but it shows appreciation can help you win new friends can you imagine what your relationship with people would be like if you thanked every single person who ever did even the least kindness towards you what if everyone in the world took time to be thankful just a few days it'll be thanksgiving it'll be past it'll be history but 365 days a year if there is benefits of being thankful hallelujah would you call right now i, I, I i'm I've got a burden. I've got a heart. When I walk in my pulpit at Miracle Deliverance Tabernacle, my dream, my desire is to touch everyone that's listening. From I love it when the children walk up and say, Brother Wynn, I like that sermon. I understood what you said. And I like it when an 80-year-old or 90-year-old leans over and hugs my neck and says, Pastor, you helped me today. You, you, you read my mail today. You encouraged me today. You lifted me up today. That's what I do when I go into that, that pulpit. But now as I sit in this studio, whatever nation, whatever country, 
country, whatever state you're in, I want to help you. I want to encourage you. If, if you're, if you're in a, a skyscraper office uh, on a multi-million dollar business, I want to help you. If you're in a prison cell, I want to help you. If you're, if you're locked up, I want to help you. Wherever you are, I want this Jesus. Would you call now? Let us pray with you. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth out of them all because the eye of the Lord is on the righteous and his ears open to our cry. I've took, took our church family. We've assembled prayer teams and they come and answer these phones and they're people that care. They're, they're people that have compassion. They're people that fast and pray and seek God and we see deliverances and we see salvation and we see healing and restorations when these men and women begin to pray. So will you call now? Someone's waiting to pray with you. If the line is busy, if you'll leave your name and your number, someone will call you back and pray with you. The Lord cares about you and we care about you. Whatever you're going through, we, we've mailing out thousands of these from the from the body of Paul were taking handkerchiefs and aprons and special miracles was wrought. We would like to mail you a free prayer cloth. We're, we're mailing them out all over the country. We're hearing reports back of people being healed and set free and addictions being broke. Somebody went in surgery the other day and they said, Brother when I put it in my sock. I wanted it to go in surgery with me. And, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to take weeks and weeks for restoration done back to work again. I'm telling you there's power in prayer. If any two can touch and agree. And there's no there's no healing power just in this piece of material, but it's, but it's when it releases your faith to touch the hem of the garment of Jesus. Hallelujah. God's got a miracle for you. The Lord wants to move for you. He's got a turnaround for you. Call now. Let us pray with you. Benefits of being thankful. Thankful people receive more. When, when you was a child, when, or even your own children, if you buy them something and they tear it up and say, well, I didn't like it no way, and you've worked hard, and you've made $20 an hour, and you sacrificed to buy that toy, and they tear it up and throw it down, it makes you think twice when you want to invest in another toy till their attitude changes. But a day later, a week later, they come and say, say, Daddy, Mama, Poppy, Nene, I love that toy. You've been so kind to me. It makes you willing to go do it again. Don't you know the Lord's the same way when He moves and moves? for you and you never even look lift your head to say thank you you never even lift your heart to say I appreciate you I praise you hallelujah hallelujah the, the, the old preachers the old school preachers are preach it's like the hog eating under the acorn tree and he never looks up to see where the acorns are coming from he just keeps on eating don't you do Jesus like that ever once in a while when you're eating a good meal don't just say a, a small thank you prayer at the beginning of it but every once in a while say Lord thank you that I've got food on my table Every once in a while when you're taking a stroll or walking, just lift your hands and raise your voice. Say, Jesus, thank you that I can walk. Thank you that I can feed myself and bathe myself. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, that I live in a country where I'm free. Thank you that I can I have a desire to go to church. Being thankful. Thankful people get more. In, in, in the book of, of Jonah 2, 9, And I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. This man is not in a pulpit preaching to 10,000 people. He's not sitting in a studio recording a message that's going to go around the world in the 60 or 70 nations and the 84 million homes. He's, he's not sitting on a bench with his wife. He's not sitting at a breakfast table with his children. This man's in the belly of the fish. He's in the belly of the whale. There's a half of a, 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 a little shark beside him. It's bitten too. There's seaweed around him. There's all kinds of acids. His little skin is bleached. And he's there and he says, he says, I'm in the worst place I've ever been. You and I have been in some bad places. I've never been in the belly of the whale. We've been in some storms and some battles. And if Jonah can praise God in the belly of the whale, why don't you praise God in that hospital room right now? Why don't you praise him in that jail cell or that prison cell? Why don't you praise him while your, your home's in a storm, your finances are in a mess, your crisis all around you? Hallelujah. But I will sacrifice. A sacrifice is something I give to you. People say, well, I'm going to sacrifice. I don't think that's what he's saying. He said, our God desires sacrifice and I'm going to give you a sacrifice. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to praise you and I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. Thanksgiving, I will pay that that I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. Don't you remember you told him, if you'll save me, I'll praise you. If you'll forgive me, I'll praise you. If you'll put my home back together, I'll praise you. If you'll heal this 
this cancer, I'll praise you. If you'll give me a job, I'll praise you. If you'll bless me with this home or this car, I will praise you. But here you are, you've got everything you've asked for, and we hardly ever look up. But somebody, somebody, there is benefits of, of being thankful. There is benefits. Jonah in this mess, he said, I'll pay that that I have vowed. And the Lord spake unto the fish, and it vomited out Jonah upon the dry land. Hallelujah. If the Lord can speak to a fish, he can speak to your boss, he can speak to your disease, he can speak to your lawyer, your judge, your doctor. Hallelujah. He can make a way where there seemeth to be no way. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will lift up and raise up a standard. He's a way maker. He's a chain breaker. He's a present help in time of trouble. Brother when I can't praise the Lord. If Jonah can praise the Lord in the fish's belly, surely you can praise the Lord wherever you are right now. And when you praise him, he will come. Let me show you the second example, Luke 17 and 12. And he entered into a certain village. There met him 10 men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voice and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves to the priest. And it came to pass, as they went, they were cleansed. Hallelujah. And they lifted up their voice and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Call right now. Let, let, let somebody reach for the Lord to have mercy on you. Call right now. Let this prayer team here pray with you. Dedicated men and women, prayer warriors, soldiers of the cross, men and women who know Jesus one-on-one. -on -one. Call now, let them pray with you. We have some mighty prayer warriors here. We're getting reports all the time continually. Could I hear your report of how God's moved for you? These 10 lepers have cried, Jesus, have mercy on us. And he turned around and he said, go show yourself to the priest. And it came to pass as they went, they were cleansed. Could I, could I paint a picture for you? You've read and studied so much about leprosy all the different thoughts about it but but it it it, it has it has a pus it it has it, it leaks out of your skin and it has a horrible smell and it'll eat away a part of an ear a part of a jaw it can eat away part of your fingers or a piece of your hand leprosy they were leprosy colonies where they would put these people together and these 10 were there and as they left they were cleansed go back and study leviticus where they were cleansed before they could present themselves to the priest they had to go be washed hallelujah but jesus cleansed them i i kind of think that he cleaned, cleaned their clothes all the stuff that had leaked out on their clothes all the smell the rotten smell all the horror but, but when he cleansed them those that had a finger the finger was still missing but it was grown over the prettiest baby skin you ever saw if they had a piece of an ear missing that piece of the ear was still missing but that most beautiful skin grew over you know how when God fixed things he fixes it right part of a jaw missing some of their lips some, some, of, some of their arm wherever that leprosy had eat away but they were cleansed there was no smell, there was no stench, there was no pus run. Hallelujah. He had cleansed them. And they looked down and they said, we've got our miracle. And they never did come back to church as it's recorded. How many people have come to church to get their home restored, to get their child saved or healed or delivered? And God moved and they never did come back. They got what they asked for, but they didn't get the fullness of it. Thankful people get more. Hallelujah. Listen to this. And they, as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back with a loud voice glorifying God. And he fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus asked, answered him, were they not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? Hallelujah. Friend, are you the one or are you the nine? Have you come back thankful people receive more. There's benefits when you're thankful to the Lord. He draws nigh. Your, your thankfulness causes you to draw nigh to Him and when you draw nigh to Him He turns around and draws nigh to you. When He draws nigh to you, sickness can't stay. Poverty can't stay. Storms can't stay. Hurts can't stay. Diseases can't stay. Tempter can't stay. Addictions cannot stay. When you draw nigh to Him He draws nigh to you and when He draws nigh to you, every enemy has to flee. Hallelujah. Every suicide spirit has to flee. Every depression spirit has to flee. Every enemy that comes in like a flood, it has to flee when the presence of the Lord draws nigh to you. And Jesus answered and said, were they not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? They are not found that return to give glory to God. Save this stranger. One man come back to say thank you. And he said unto him, rise, go thy way. Thy faith has made thee whole. Now nine have, nine have went on back to their wives and their children. They've not been allowed by the law 
allowed to hug their children for a long time. They've not been allowed to, to walk into their village for a long time. They had to stand afar off and cry, leprosy, unclean, unclean, leprosy, unclean. They had to be by themselves. They were ten together. They were separated from others. They wandered together, begging or pleading or doing any little thing they could to make a little money or begging for some bread. But now they're going back home to their children, but they're going home with a missing ear. And they're going home with a part of their jaw gone. It's beautiful skin. It's healed over. The leprosy's totally gone. The spots are totally gone. But they're going home missing a part of a hand or a finger. But this one, he says, rise, go thy way. Thy faith has made thee whole. I would have loved to have been standing there. Now, I don't know what now was wrong with this little man. I imagine there's two or three fingers missing. I imagine probably you could see his teeth. Some of his lips missing. Perhaps the ear was eat off. I don't know. But all of a sudden, Jesus said, arise, go thy way. Thy faith has made thee whole. All of a sudden, little fingers begin to pop out. Piece of ear begin to grow back. His jaw became completely smooth. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm pleading with you. I'm begging with you. I'm speaking to you under the anointing of the Most High God. If you'll turn around and go back and be thankful. Go to your prayer closet and be thankful. Go to church and be thankful. Don't wait till the worship leader says, please lift your hands. Please somebody praise him. Don't let the preacher have to say, don't let your pastor have to say, somebody please worship him. You ought to be able to worship him. He died for you while you was a yet sinner. He restored your home, your marriage. He saved your children. He delivered you. He turned your life around. He, he fixed the impossible. He, he chose you and he's kept you and he's fighting for you. And you ought to return back and just say, I've come back to say I'm thankful. And when you do, you'll not only be cleansed, you'll be made whole. He'll restore everything that the canker worm and the locusts and the caterpillars come to eat away. I feel the Holy Ghost talking to you right now. The devil's a liar. He said, you'll never get it back. Your life will never be good. Job got back double for his trouble. God is a restorer. He moved Joseph from the dungeon to the palace overnight. He moved David from the sheep cot to being king of Israel in just a moment of time. When God gets ready to move, ain't no enemy can stop you. There's no past that can stop you. Your past is no match for the blood of Jesus. What a song. Your past. I wish you'd say that out loud. Devil, my past, my mistakes, my mess, my back yonder, it's no match for the blood of Jesus. When they have a wrestling match or a boxing match, they match them up to they're kind of about the same. You say, well, I got a big past, but I got a big Jesus. Well, I got a mess back there, but I got a big Jesus. Hallelujah. Call now and let us pray with you. Call, call now and just let, just let us help you reach for the Lord. Hallelujah. Some of you, God's promised you he's going to move in your ministry. It looks like everything's falling apart. You can't even get the building or the property. Some of you, God's promised you he's going to move in your home. And now it looks like papers are about being ready to be filed. Some of you, God said, I'm going to move in your finances. Now it looks like factories are closing down and doors are closing. Somebody's going to move in your health. And now you've got another bad report. But I want to speak to your heart. I want to speak to your soul, your spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth out of them all. I wrote a book on you can't kill a promise. Hallelujah. David's walking out through there. David's not saying, poor little old me, Goliath's going to kill me today. David's walking out there and said, nobody believes in me. Nobody trusts me. Nobody thinks I can't do nothing. But they don't know this God in me. I've killed a bear and I've killed a lion and I have a prophecy. I have a promise. I have a word that I'm going to wear that crown. I'm going to sit in that, 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 that throne room and I'm going to be king of Israel. Now I've not wore that crown yet and I've not been king of Israel and I can't die today. But according to Goliath, somebody's going to die today, but it's not going to be me that's going to be fed to the fowls of the air. Goliath, somebody's not going home to their house today, but it's not going to be me. You're going down today, Goliath, because you can't kill a promise. I wish you'd speak to your Goliath. You can't kill a promise. I would like to give this as a free gift to you. I'll pay the postage. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You need this right now. If you're, if you're if you're in a, in a prison or in jail or locked up anywhere, let me send this book to you. God's still able to do exceedingly abundantly. Not long ago, we, we had a, a, a man got in touch with us, was, had a long sentence. We got folks together and started praying. And, and, it, and in four months, he was, he was in a halfway house. And in two months after that, he was back home. Hallelujah. From a long sentence down to that, I have seen God do exceedingly abundantly above that which we could ask or think. Call now. Let us pray. 
pray with you. Let us believe with you. What, he's the God of the impossible. He's the God. He can change what man can't change. He can fix what humans can't fix. He can turn it around. He can change it. He's a present help in time of trouble. And he cares about you. Peter said, cast your care upon him for he cares about you. Can I tell you, friend, the Lord cares about you. God bless you. God is speaking to some of you to hold my hands up, to partner with me, to fulfill this last call, this last voice that's going out, this last sound that's going out. Would you stand with me? Some of you could support me monthly. Whatever amount you could give. Some could send a large amount monthly. Some could send $20, $25, $50 to help me reach another generation, to help me reach another soul, to touch another family. One plants, one waters. One reaps, but God gives the increase. So whatever your part is, if you'll stand with me when we get to heaven. And God not only bless us in heaven, he'll bless you now. I wish you'd pray about partnering with me to help me reach this generation with the love of Jesus. That the Lord cares about you. Number three, being thankful will remind you all blessings flow down from God and not up from you. When you keep your eyes on God, how can Pharaoh kill you? How can the floods drown you, the fire burn you, the lions eat you, the storm destroy you? How can this situation you're in consume you? If you'll keep your eyes on the Lord, the more we thank Him, the more we see Him working in us and around us. Gratitude, thankfulness, being thankful helps us sense God's presence. James 1, 17, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father lights with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Hallelujah. If you'd call now, somebody's waiting to pray with you. We care about your need. This is not all about just meeting our needs here. Your needs are as important as ours and we care about you. And God has put it on your heart to listen to this country preacher. And I not only want to preach to you, but I have prayer warriors standing by right now who will pray with you. You need a healing. You need a miracle. Whatever you need, somebody's waiting right now to help you touch the Lord. Number four, this is benefits, benefits of being thankful. If you become unthankful, it won't be long till you become unholy. You'll never look for another car when you're thankful and you like the one you have. You won't be trying to buy another home and another subdivision. If you love where you are and you enjoy your home, you won't be looking for another job. If you're thankful for the one you've got and you won't be looking for another God. If you're thankful for the I am, for Jehovah Jireh, Prince of Peace, King of Kings and Lord of Lord. The Lord is my shepherd. He's the bread of life. He's the truth. He's the way. He's the way maker. And if you're thankful for him, Tim, in, in Paul wrote Timothy in 2 Timothy 3, 2, for men shall be lovers of their own selves. We're living in that day right now. Men love themselves, their covetousness, their boasters, their proud, their blasphemers, disobedient to parents. Never saw such a generation that don't respect their parents. You need to respect them as long as they're alive and love them. If it wasn't for them, you wouldn't be here. You need, need to honor your parents. But he said, let me read it again. For men shall be lovers of their own self. They'll be covetousness, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents. Be unthankful and then unholy. If you get unthankful to our God, he won't belong to your unholy. If you get to where you don't appreciate him, you'll because he gives you joy. He gives you peace. He satisfies your soul. But if you get to where he means nothing to you, you'll be looking somewhere else for it to satisfy you. Un unthankfulness, person without grace or gracefulness, who thinks they have a right to the service of all men, yet feels no obligation, no gratitude. Ingratitude has always been regarded as one of the worst of crimes. One of, one of the blackest of sins is just an unthankful person. Just somebody just, just, just feels like the world owes them something. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Get up and fight for your life. Get up and get your job. Fight for your family. Let God bless you. Let God make a way for you. Let God make, raise a standard up for you. But don't start being unthankful. You ought to be thankful that you've been saved, that you've been forgiven, that you're born again, that you're on your way to heaven. The fifth benefit of being thankful. Thankful people will push others to be thankful. Unthankful people. You get around somebody that's unthankful. Just, just yakking and unthankful. That spirit will get on you and you won't appreciate nothing. But if you'll get around somebody that's thankful. What, one of the generals a hundred years ago, he said, I don't even take a drink of water without I thank Almighty God for it. What, what, how wonderful it would be if, to live that type of life. To, to walk that type of, of walk where you're just so thankful. Exodus fifteen twenty And Miriam, the prophetess, the sister of Aaron, took a thimble in her hand. And all the women went after her. 
with timbrels and with dancing. This one woman, they've crossed the Red Sea. Pharaoh has drowned it. Nobody's going to do nothing. They're just going to continue on their journey. How many times has God blessed you and you just continued on your journey? How many times has God broke a fever off a baby and you just continued on your journey? How many times has God raised a standard up for you and you just continued on your journey? How many times has God fought for you and you just continued on your journey? I was going to sit here and just teach and be calm today, but I'm getting excited. I can't help it. I love Jesus. And Jesus is worthy of our praise and he deserves our praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Somebody's waiting to pray with you now if you'd call. If you'd call whatever your need is. Say, will you agree with me? Will you bind this that's coming against me? Would you pray the Lord lift up a standard? Would you pray he cursed this sickness off me? Would you pray that God will heal me and save me? Save my children. Whatever your need is. I want to pray for you right now. If you're lost, pray with me. The Bible said if we would just confess our sin and forsake our sin and, and, and recognize him as the Lord of our life, he would come and to our hearts and he would forgive us and save us. Jesus, forgive me of my sin. Forgive me the sins I've done that hurt me and hurt you and hurt others. Forgive me, Lord. Hallelujah. Give me another chance, Lord. I, I recognize you as the only door to heaven, Jesus. I recognize you as the only way to salvation. Come into my heart. Forgive me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Fill me with the Holy Ghost, Lord. Hallelujah. Teach me to walk with you. Teach me to lead my family. Teach me to be a soul winner. Teach me to be a prayer warrior. Hallelujah. God, I, I pray against every sickness, every disease. In the name of Jesus, by your stripes, we are healed. God, I pray over finances. Hallelujah. Open the windows of heaven and let it rain. God, I pray over people that's been through dry spells and deserts and storms. God, I pray for that pastor that's helping others and, 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 and the, in one of the heart, walking through one of the hardest seasons they've ever walked. I've prophesied to you, pa pastor, I'm prophesying to you, daughter, sir, I'm prophesying to you this season's changing. This, this, this spirit that's come down to destroy you. It's not just been a storm. The devil's come to destroy you. But greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. The Holy Ghost is raised a standard up for you. Hallelujah. Watch some things shift and turn. Watch some pressures break. Watch God build, build back some bridges and some healing take place. This is Brother Anthony Wynn telling you there's benefits of worshiping the Lord and blessing the Lord and praising the Lord. There's benefits. There is so many benefits when you draw nigh to God. There is so many benefits of being thankful. There are so many benefits when you walk with a thankful heart. Pray for us. We'll pray for you. This is Brother Anthony Wynn telling you that Jesus cares about you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us at Anthony Wynn Ministries. This is our 20th year of touching hearts and changing lives through TV ministry. And this is made possible by our partners. Because of your kindness, we have reached over 150 million homes worldwide, and we're currently in the process of constructing a new office space and studio building. It is our goal to double in size this year and add new stations to our outreach. Currently, we send out thousands of free resources monthly, and your donations and partnerships make this possible. Partner with us today and become part of our ministry as we reach an orphanage in Haiti, a recovery center, and all our local missions. When you partner with us, you can receive a free DVD or CD, a monthly newsletter, and an Oasis magazine. Just call 1-877-226-4088 or visit our website at anthonywin.org. Thank you. God bless you.